intensity moving off to Dominica. We're seeing those winds come up and that has been the story with this system over the last 24 hours. So moving forward in time, look at this trend. A huge spike here just in the last uh, the last couple of hours, but 160 mile per hour winds, that is certainly something. But we were just at 65 miles per hour just yesterday. So this is undergoing what we call rapid intensification. That's when the storm is very quickly deepening and in uh, changing in its structure into that mature hurricane picture that you're seeing here. This is a mark of a very mature and devastating storm that we are dealing with. And it looks like that just by glancing at it here from the satellite. If you zoom in and take a look, there it is right off the coast of Dominica. It's uh, likely within 20 miles at this point. So the eye wall is just offshore and going to be making a direct hit and a landfall here within just a matter of hours uh, at this point. Models are agreeing that this system will continue move off, uh, moving off to the west north Northwest. There's a higher pressure over here that's fairly weak. It's still uh, be responsible for the steering of that system, but we are likely to be seeing a turn more towards the north and in that direction. Mm -hmm. But sometime in quite some time, uh, make a direct landfall here on the island of Puerto Rico. The conditions are very favorable. Uh, life-threatening storm surge in some areas and as well as very strong winds here, Chris and Liana, that we are dealing with. And it's moving very slowly. So even if it makes landfall tonight, it's still going to be lingering here in the Leeward Islands by tomorrow afternoon. Thanks so much, Dr. Navarro. And not only do we have Hurricane Maria, we, we also have Hurricane Jose, and it's producing dangerous surf and rip currents pounding parts of the East Coast right now. And that also includes Long Island. Yeah, meteorologist Mike Seidel is in Montauk, New York. And, and Mike, I know you're going to talk about Jose and the impacts expected there, but uh, just a few moments ago, as you know, the National Hurricane Center saying that uh, Maria is now a Category 5 hurricane just before it makes landfall on Dominica. For people who have not been watching the Weather Channel for years, who have not necessarily been paying attention to the tropics for years, but the fact that we've had two in such a short amount. Just the howling just gets flattened. I mean, Barbuda basically is now an uninhabited island. So let's uh, pray for the folks that are downstream from Hurricane Maria, and let's hope that it makes that turn and misses the United States. Meanwhile, back here in the U.S., we're worried about Jose, not as a formidable hurricane, because it's now become almost partly non-tropical. It's a big gyre of wind, and the wave action has propagated all the way up here to Montauk. In, fire, in fact, the entire East Coast has these huge waves. These are about 8 to 10 footers, and tide was high about... Uh, well, it's actually, it's going to be high in about 15 minutes. I've lost track of time, about 15 minutes. So you can see the entire beach is underwater. There is not much beach here because of storm after storm over the years. So at high tide, there's not a whole lot of uh, square footage to put your chair. The tides are going to get higher as we go through the next couple of days. In fact, the real tides of concern will be tomorrow evening, tomorrow evening, and also on Wednesday morning up and down the east coast. And here we've got a tropical storm watch here. More weather moving in tomorrow. Wind and rain will pick up. Now let's go back to our hurricane expert, Dr. Erica Navarro. Yeah, thank you so much, Mike. We're going to take a closer look at the currents here with Hurricane Maria as it's approaching the islands. We're seeing the winds pick up here into the tropical storm force range, and those will likely come up as we see Irma become uh, move even closer to these islands here in the next couple of hours. If we take a look in time at what this is going to play out, this is uh, uh, Hurricane Maria here moving towards the U.S. and British Virgin Islands by tomorrow night. Then off into Wednesday, again, the storm isn't moving fairly quickly, so it's going to be lingering in a lot of these areas which is going to exacerbate the rainfall threat. Wednesday morning, those impacts in Puerto Rico will begin to pick up and likely be life-threatening and catastrophic here along the island of Puerto Rico with a system of likely Category 4 or 5 strength making landfall in that region over. Um, again, all the models are, are fairly certain that, that that track will maintain through the next couple of days. By Thursday afternoon, that storm's going to be north of the Dominican Republic, but right along the coast, we'll have much more coming up from Hurricane Central. Here. I take pictures of sunrises, but with my new video under the weather channel here this out of martinique and in the distance you can see some waves you can hear the wind as well this uh, still early on this is south of where the storm the monster category 5 hurricane maria is expected to make landfall but already before the sun has gone down seeing some of the weather ahead of the storm which 
does uh, look like it's going to be a, a very long and, and uh, unfortunately very bad night mm -hmm. in the Caribbean. Yeah, and in Puerto Rico, many in San Juan had just gotten water and power back after Irma struck. Now they're preparing for Maria. Earlier today, Alex Wallace and Julie Martin spoke with Sean Swarner. He's a two typed how residents are preparing. A lot of people are trying to get before it gets here, which is what they didn't do last time. So now they're actually planning ahead, and I think I think everybody should be okay if it can. About uh, family that may be uh, uh, there as well. What are some of the things that you're doing to get ready? Well, we already have about 100 gallons of water planned and, and poured out of the uh, the water spouts uh, before we lost the water into big, just giant buckets, um, bathtubs, coolers, you name it. All of the um, uh, the patio furniture has been thrown into the pool. We have a lot of dried food. We have a gas grill, some propane. We have everything ready to go. We're boarding up the windows. We're taking in everything from outside so it doesn't blow around, and we're just going to hunker down and pray. Yeah, with this increase in intensity, Maria is now the second Category 5 hurricane of the 2017 season. And to give you some context, we've only seen this two Category 5 systems in the same season five other times on record. So this is not a frequent event that we often see. These are very strong systems, and it's not often that we see two in the same season. So this, a very active hurricane season, that is underway. And uh, Hurricane Maria here, just off the coast of Dominica, this is the radar now showing you the rainfall that is imminent in these areas in the Leeward Islands. And there's the center of Maria uh, coming ever so closely to Dominica in the last couple of hours. This is the past three hours, actually. That eye wall is likely just off the coast right now. So wind and rain imminent in this area but with a small eye like this that wind field is likely contained to just around the eye but we will be seeing stronger winds spreading across these areas through the evening tonight and then into the morning tomorrow here's a look at the forecast cone showing you where uh, the forecast track of Maria is to go a fairly good agreement here in the models that we're expecting this northwestward trend to continue and likely bring that storm almost directly over the eastern part of Puerto Rico there could be some changes here and there with the exact track of that system where the center of that storm really goes but at this point that is not the important thing really here to take away it's that impacts are going to be felt outside of the cone and they will be devastating and catastrophic because this is a very strong major system that we are dealing with right now and underway it will be moving off to the north northwest after that and uh, we impacts beyond that point still coming together but right now in the meantime we are prepping for some very heavy rainfall across much of of the northern uh, the northern and eastern Caribbean here 12 to 18 inches of rain so upwards of a foot of rain or more is the general trend across the northern leeward islands the u.s and british virgin islands in puerto rico that is a lot of rainfall and we could be seeing as much as 20 to 25 inches of rain in one area isolated area here depending on how the local factors come into play so a very heavy threat here that'll be spreading off to uh, the island of hispaniola after that that's moving into your thursday and it's not just the rain there's also the storm surge that is for most of the northern coast here but also the southern coast of puerto rico also a threat for storm surge as well we'll have much more coming up here at the weather channel stay with we haven't seen a storm of this magnitude uh, in almost a century in Puerto Rico, and, and those were uh, uh, very devastating. Uh, a lot of lives were lost, and, um, and many of the infrastructure was lost as well. Uh, but now we have some resources we didn't have then. We have uh, good shelters. We have uh, telecommunications. We can uh, see, pinpoint when uh, the storm is coming. Uh, and essentially, we're uh, less than 48 hours away from, from landfall. Uh, we want to make sure that the people recognize that this is not uh, something that's uh, is likely to skid off the island like some of the other storm it is very likely to go right through it and that the devastation it will cause uh, might be unprecedented yeah, very scary situation. That was just the governor of Puerto Rico. And I mean, we're looking at Hurricane Maria. I'm here with Dr. Erica Navarro, hurricane specialist. And I mean, we were just talking about the comparison of the size of Hurricane Irma. Because I mean, just at first glance, this looks as monstrous as Hurricane Irma was. Yeah, Irma got to be very big towards yeah. the end of its lifetime. We saw that uh, the cloud shield really yeah. extending up to 400 miles across. And this one, we saw that this very uh, dense cloud area 
really expanding over the last day as that storm's going through those intensity changes. So if we do a rough, rough estimate here on the satellite, it's about 400 miles. So dangerous systems here, to, and it, right back to back. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been a long time since we've seen something like this. But what is different about this storm as compared to Irma is the size of the eye right now. They call that a pinhole eye because it's literally so tiny that it looks like a pinhole. So those very strong winds are confined to a very small area. Mm -hmm. But that's these systems often undergo very strong intensity changes, uh, lots mm -hmm. of fluctuations over their lifetime, and they're very strong and dangerous systems. Look how clear it is. I mean, yeah. and for a period of time, I mean, over the past, what, four hours, it has a the absolute mm -hmm. opposite. This mm -hmm. storm has increased its wind speed very rapidly over a 24 hour period. Uh, it's being been able to tap into these very uh, favorable conditions here, warm ocean temperatures, the lack of wind shear. And unfortunately, it has everything going for it as well moving forward into the future because those conditions aren't going to change. And models are in fairly good agreement right now. These are the spaghetti plots, and usually these are a little more spread out. But look at how narrow mm. this region yeah. is. They're all in really good agreement that that system is going to continue this mm. northwestward trek here. And as you heard the governor of Puerto Rico say, this one's not going to be like Irma. It's mm. not going to move off to the north. We saw Puerto Rico really miss what could have been the worst of it with Irma. This is not that. <laughs> this is not that system. We're going to be seeing likely a direct hit here um, on the island of Puerto Rico. It's scary, too, because, I mean, not only is this the eye, this is the center of the hurricane, but, I mean, we saw the, how large that system is. So the impacts we felt across many, many islands. Yeah, absolutely. And with mm. a wind field like this, again, even though that eye is very small right now, that is likely to change moving forward in the future, especially with these conditions. These storms can often undergo eye wall replacement cycles, which will broaden the wind field if it's able to complete that cycle. So change is still underway. And again, we are expecting strong impacts well outside the area, regardless of whether or not you get that eye wall. Because look at this, the entire island of Puerto mm. Rico will feel will feel the impacts of Maria. If that, if this track verifies, that is what will be in play for a place like Puerto Rico. But it's not just Puerto Rico that we're concerned about. This storm will also come very close here to the northern coast of the Dominican Republic. Six to nine foot storm surge is potential here over most of the Leeward Islands in Puerto Rico. And we are likely going to be seeing storm surge here as well um, onto the northern coast there of the island of Hispaniola. And then the threats will continue. And if that storm holds up, like the models are suggesting it will, we'll be seeing those impacts spreading into the Bahamas and potentially Turk Turks and Caicos by the end of the week. Now, is there any case where things could potentially change? Any kind of situation? So, um, down the line, Maria may experience some unfavorable winds. It will likely go through those fluctuations in intensity, which could change things, but it's going to be a very dangerous storm. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Navarro. Wise words from Virginia Beach's deputy city manager. Stay alert and be prepared. Thanks so much for staying with us. I'm Leona Brackett. And I'm Chris Warren, Virginia Beach, one of the spots in line for significant impacts from Hurricane Jose. We're also watching a Category 5 mm. hurricane. It's a monster, Hurricane Maria. Let's get the very latest on what's happening right now in the tropics, close to home, and in the Caribbean. Uh, this is a scary night for a lot of people. Yeah, and I think getting scarier here, especially for the people on the island of Dominica, because that system is just off the eastern coast right now of that island. A major devastating Category 5 hurricane here just maybe within an hour or two of making landfall currently into areas here in the Lesser Antilles, including the, the island of Dominica in particular. Winds it being estimated at 160 miles per hour right now. That was an estimate given by the aircraft that flew through the storm just an hour or so ago. So this system is making its way here through the Caribbean and will continue to do so along its track to the west northwest over the next couple of days. Here's a close look at that system. Again, you can see the very small eye here making its approach there to the island of Dominica. And unfortunately, we've seen this intensification, very strong and rapid intensification of this system because it does not have a lot of wind shear that it's battling right now. Uh, anytime we have very strong vertical wind here in the vicinity of a hurricane that is a situation that is not favorable for development but the stronger wind shears are indicated by the colors here the, uh, the purple colors and the pinks and notice that those are well off to the sides of the screen the area where hurricane maria is is basically in the clear so it has just been able to not only strengthen but really grow throughout this time and unfortunately we look over the next two three four days even and maria will remain in a very low 
shear environment. So the models are taking it basically through the island of Puerto Rico here and then off eventually to the north northwest and that shear is going right along with it. Notice those strong purple colors there really stay away from the tracks of those models showing you that Maria still stands further potential for development even beyond this point which is really hard uh, to even think about. So Maria is the second category five system that we've had in this season. We've only seen five other seasons on record that have had two category five uh, systems or more. Uh, for some context, the season of 2005 had four category five hurricanes. So uh, a very scary season indeed, but because that is not something that we often observe here in the Atlantic basin. Some of the threats to come include very heavy rainfall across much of being anticipated for areas in the northern leeward islands. That includes the U.S. and British Virgin Islands as well. The island of Puerto Rico moves further off to the north and that will likely lessen the rainfall threat there for a place like Haiti and the western portion of the Dominican Republic. But we can, along these uh, areas in the Caribbean, so absolutely enough to cause life-threatening flash flooding. The threat for mudslides, especially in Puerto Rico, is also fairly high and that threat will persist for out a couple days after that. So these threats will continue for a period of time. And then it's not just uh, rainfall that we're concerned about. It's also life-threatening storm surge here for many of these areas. Six to nine feet above ground is the estimate. And uh, that is not something you can withstand. Six feet is enough to leave. So life-threatening storm surge here. 